Good afternoon and welcome to the Bermuda Tech Summit and the Bespoke Analytics Roundtable discussion, the future of data, the modern data state. I'm not gonna spend too much time talking, but I wanna briefly talk about our goal today is to help give some clarity on what the modern data state is and how it should be the core of any organization's business intelligence strategy. We're gonna to try to focus on what we believe is the true foundation for analyzing data to make valuable decisions that drive profitability while increasing operational efficiency. How does an organization access, manage, distribute, and analyze all available data while it's valuable? Well, we believe the modern data state is the answer to this. And to help with this answer, I've called on three experts within the business intelligence community, all from different perspectives. First, the architect and the analyst perspective, it's, we call it the creation aspect. How do I design my solution? And we have Paul McLeod, president and founder of Bermudian-based Bespoke Analytics. Uh, Bespoke has been delivering business intelligence and data analytics solutions for all industries within the island for the past 20 years. Next is going to be the technology perspective. How can technology make it better? This is kind of the motor. Uh, we have to help with that Joseph Treadwell, who's a solutions specialist, director for Time Extender. It's an innovative data analytics automation company that designs platforms and solutions to enable its customers and end users the ability to realize data driven decisions faster. And then we have the stakeholder perspective. Uh, what does it deliver to my organization? This is the end goal. Uh, to help with that, we have Stephen Pierce. He's Vice President of Finance Systems and Analytics uh, for the Bank of NT Butterfield & Sons here in Bermuda, previously from HSBC, where he filled a similar role. Gentlemen, thank you and welcome to the discussion. Thank you. Well, let's just get started here. I think the first question would be, what exactly is a modern data estate? And I think uh, we should probably start with Stephen to kind of give uh, his, kind of from his perspective, what that means to him. Well, uh, when I think about it, it, to me, it's just a new set of words uh, for explaining uh, how we bring together all the components re required for reporting and, and data, data analysis. And this is from the source information that we get from our source systems all the way through to the final reports that we produce. Uh, but in addition to that, it gives us a lot of analytical capabilities as well, because we can tap into that central data to achieve an analysis, which is, which is great. Let's move on to the technology perspective. Uh, Joseph? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Kevin. And great points there, Stephen. I think you're absolutely right about that. I think there's... Um, you know, if, from my perspective, I think the, the modern data estate is, is really it's taking all the organization's data as an asset and organizing it and governing it in a way so that it becomes use, a useful tool for the business. And let's take a look at the architect or the analyst perspective, Paul. Yeah, um, so, you know, further to what, uh, what, what Joseph was saying there. Um, the whole the whole concept of the modern data state really evolved um, to address uh, two particular aspects of you know businesses' data needs. One is being able to actually, as Joseph said, consider your data as an asset of the organization. So you know, and and it's specifically targeted to allow you to leverage that maximally, but also to make sure that you're you're protecting the investments that you've got in that data. Um, going forward, as you as you as you um, you know, as you're evolving your environment, um, the next piece really about it, the modern data state is is um, it's a holistic approach to make sure that not only you're leveraging your data um, you know as an asset and getting as much as you can from right now, but you're putting in place a framework and a structure that allows you to adapt and bring on board new technologies. I mean, there's it, this space changes very quickly, and you know the the must have data technology that's going to exist in three years time does not exist. You know, people probably haven't even thought about it today, but it will be there in three years time. And the modern data state is an approach that allows an organization to make sure that they can, they can move with those times and be flexible and agile and, and bring to bear those new data tools into their organization without having to throw away everything they've done today. So we kind of got an overview right now of what the modern data state is, but and, and I know we don't have enough time to go into all of the benefits, but there's, there's so many benefits to, to a modern data state. I'd like from each of your perspectives to highlight some of those key benefits. What does it deliver to the organization? We'll go back to Stephen to, to get his perspective on this. Well, there, there is a lot in this space. So uh, I'll just get started uh, from my perspective, uh, what I see at the benefits and by all means the others, if they can kick in to, 
sort of embellish or enhance what, what I'm going through as I as I address it. But but to me, I mean, the key thing is uh, central data standard tools. I mean, that's that's what I see as opposed to data everywhere and every tool that you can imagine trying to tap in and, and, and transform that data into something useful. It's a central version of the truth uh, from a data perspective and also for analysis. Uh, you know where your data is and you can get it. Uh, you don't have to ask someone to send you a spreadsheet. You can just tap into the data as it exists in the central environment, which, which is really good. Um, and it makes sure that the users that, that plug into that central data are gonna get a consistent result. That's, that's what I see. You're not gonna be at risk that someone has their own spreadsheet that they've transformed and adjusted outside the sort of the central data sources. Um, you know, this is coming from a central source. And in many cases, uh, for particular components, you're comfortable that it's been reconciled because my background is finance. Uh, we don't trust anything unless we can reconcile it to the general ledger to be yeah. sure it's correct. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'd, I'd make a, a little point on that as well. One of the things that, that in, and I'm sure, you know, uh, you, you, you've experienced this type of uh, situation, Stephen, I know you have, um, yes. you know. <laughs> where you get in organizations, um, you, you, you get uh, little pools of, of data producers, where you get people who are, you know, are producing data throughout the organization from, you know, manually from data they're pulling from different systems, and they become these sources of, of, of data that quite often can be conflicting. Um, but people rely on them because, you know, the need for data is, 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 is so real. I mean, one of the things that, you know, the advantage of the modern data state is, is it gives you that centralized location as you talked about Stephen, but it also gives you governance you know, yes. so as an organization it allows you to say okay you know if i'm reporting my financials i need to make sure that my financials are the same no matter who's giving those numbers out to the kind of uh, you know to the auditors or, or, or to the or to our shareholders or, or or whatever i'd like to add to that is one of the the advantages as well is because you can transform the data so quickly um, you can then use those results uh, more quickly. And from that end, that means that you can actually reconcile those results. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a quick process to produce the data and do the reconciliation right at the beginning of the process in many ways. And therefore you've signed off on that source data before anyone engages with it. For your organization, Stephen, what has it done as far as saving time? Well, it's, it's done. <laughs> Well, we're, we're, we're in the process of implementing it in different phases, but right. I can say for sure that what I find interesting is that you go through the challenge of producing a report, um, but then once that's done, uh, you're saving a lot of time so that you're then diverting your attention now to analyzing that data. So, so you, you, you just spread your time out to uh, deeper analysis because you have that time before, it was enough to get the report produced, but now you can get the report produced and analyze it. And even more interesting, uh, what we do now is we actually will run the reports before month end um, so that we can actually see results before the deadline. And then we can spot any anomalies that would need to be addressed before the reporting period closes. The reason I asked that question is I was just speaking with someone recently and, that, and that's what they said, they spend more time analyzing rather than data entry. And I think yeah. that, that's kind of a big, uh, Big aspect, Joseph. Let's get uh, let's get your uh, input on this. Yeah, yeah. So you know the the original question was you know what are, what are the benefits of right. the modern data state? And I think the key piece here is is the modern part of the modern data state using uh, modern technologies. And and in these technologies, we have uh, a number of different benefits when we're talking about like placing data in in modern cloud technologies for example scalability um being able to know that okay regardless of how much data you're going to have a year from now five years from now ten years from now that the technology that you're using is going to be able to scale to be able to support mm -hmm. that um, maintainability ensuring that the the databases and the services that you're using because they're oftentimes cloud-based in a modern data estate is they're continued to be maintained by that that public cloud service um, and so you don't need to rely on uh, common you know patching and, and updates that are um, that are very common for for on-prem systems 
Yeah, I'll, so. I'll make a quick comment on that. I think it's important when, you, when you're considering a modern data state and you're going through tool selection. And you know, one of the things you need to you need to be thinking about is is that three to five to ten year window. Saying, okay, the tools that I'm choosing now, how can you know you, you know you need to ensure that you're going to get uh, tools that are going to be evolving over time to help you stay current with the data for the uh, with you know with the data tools that are out there. Um, you know, that's one thing that you know that, that you know. Plug time extender. I suppose one thing we love about the time extender tool is that you know uh, you guys are working very closely, you know, with a lot of these big data platform providers, making sure that you're constantly keeping the tool aligned with the new technology that's coming up. Absolutely, yeah, it's such a key piece. I mean, it's just like buying any technology today when you're researching an investment, uh, buying a computer for for your house, right? For mm -hmm. example, you're not going to buy something that's five years old, hoping it'll last you, you know, the next six months. You're going to buy something that's that's new, hoping that it'll it'll last you the next five to ten years. Yeah, there's a there's a term that gets tossed around a lot, and I hear it a lot in, in data warehouse or data lake, and and many people think that this is is pretty much what we're talking about, and I don't it, it isn't. It's not even close. And I think the modern day state is, is encompasses so much more. It's very unique. Uh, talk a bit about how uh, the modern day state is different from a data warehouse or a data lake. Could start with Paul. Okay. Um, let me. Sh I'm going to share a little uh, a little diagram. Did I get the right one? No, I did not. I love it. That's perfect. That, that looked right. Did it? Okay. Hang on. We'll try that again. Sorry. It's live. <laughs> yeah. Can we see that? Yeah. Yeah. So um, the, the question you had, uh, Kevin, was you know uh, you know how does a how does a data lake or data warehouse differ from a modern data state. Um, really, the, the, the modern data state is a, is a, is a kind of larger, larger kind of um, a concept. And, and really, it should encompass those tools. I mean, one of the things I, I said earlier was that the modern data state should be helping you as an organization um, you know, uh, adapt to the new changing data technologies. The modern data state kind of grew out of the conflict between two basic camps, which was the data warehouse and you know, the data lakes. And the data warehouse was the first real kind of um, you know, centralized data solution and techniques, um, which is really about uh, you know, very reconcilable, very repeatable results, mostly financial or doing performance type analysis. Um, out, of, out of some of the big tech giants like, you know, like, like Amazon and Google and Netflix, came this concept of big data, which is really designed to be able to quickly as, as, uh, assimilate a lot of, of, um, of different types of data in parallel and produce results very quickly. And you end up with these two camps, each one saying ours is better, and this, this almost fight between them. Realistically, you, know, you need to be able to leverage both of those technologies. When you consider a modern data state, it's really about how do I you know, look at my needs as an organization, my entire, you know, uh, my entire you know, data space and bring together the different tools that are appropriate for my needs. Maybe, maybe a high speed, you know, you know, data consumption and analytics is right for me. So I need to lead heavily into the data, into the data lake side of things and, and in parallel processing, or, or maybe I'm more of a financial institution and uh, you know, it's really more about those audited and, 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 and repeatable and reconcilable and you know, provable results, you're gonna need all these things. And so really the modern data state is an approach where you can say, okay, I'm gonna bring all these different data tools together, as you can see on, on, on the slide I've got shared here, and I'm going to actually put a framework around them so that I can control them, I can govern them, I can allow access to the different types of data to my different end users, um, and be prepared for when the new technology comes in. I just slip that in to my, into my, um, you know, my data estate where it's appropriate. Yeah, that's such such a good point, Paul. I mean, in terms of of trends, you know, the industry in in terms of analytics has changed drastically over the last, uh, you know, ten years. Yeah. And if you if you look back, uh, even just you know four or five years ago. The, the biggest, most important thing was the data warehouse. And then it quickly changed around that time mm -hmm. to be, well, we actually don't, data warehouses are, are actually quite, quite time they're consuming old. and costly <laughs> and they're old. What we need is a data lake, right? It's new, it's, it's agile, it's fast. 
But then I think we quickly realized that the data lake also did not solve all of our problems. Mm -hmm. It only solved a part of the problem and that the data warehouse, the problems it solved were still very relevant. Yeah. Uh, and so we, we came around to this concept of the modern data estate that encompasses more than just the data lake, more than just the data warehouse. It actually serves, it's able to serve both purposes simultaneously, allowing you to ingest data quickly with, with little structure and then allowing you in the data warehouse to structure that data uh, and then have that be ready for quick analysis. Okay, so that's one buzz buzzword that we hear in the industry. The other one is gonna be Power BI. And, and I think we're talking about two different sides of the spectrum here. Um, uh, but some people believe that all they need is Power BI and it's gonna solve other problems. It's this wonderful reporting tool. But I, I really think that in order to, to maximize that Power BI, you're gonna need this modern data state. Talk a bit about that. Um, Paul, you can start here about how the modern data state uh, synchronizes with a Power BI and, and a bit of, of the differences there because there's, there is a distinct difference. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it, Microsoft are fantastic at their marketing. You have to say so. You know, and Power BI is is, is absolutely, um, you know, is, is talked about a lot. And as you said, it is a, it is a great tool. Um, it is a tool, uh, and and really, the, the modern data state is more of a concept around okay, how do I create an environment where I can use whatever tool is most appropriate to me? So if you want to think about the kind of role that that, that Power BI plays, you know, it's primarily a dashboarding and reporting tool. And so in some ways, it's not so dissimilar as you see on the, on the diagram here to, to something like Tableau or to business objects. Um, it does have some very nice features, but the, the thing that can be a little bit dangerous around Power BI is people kind of, you know, they look at that and, and if they're new in this space, they see Power BI or they hear about it and they hear the messaging and they think that's the silver bullet. That's going to solve my data problems. I'll get Power BI and then and that'll be me. I'm, I'm, I'm set. But as you see in the diagram here, it's really only that what we would call the presentation layer. Um, you know, you can do an awful lot with Power BI. Uh, you can pull in lots of sources on your own into your little dashboards. What that does though, is that propagates an environment if you don't have a centralized data repository, where again, you have lots of people with lots of different data sources and lots of different answers to the same questions. So Power BI is a fantastic tool, you know, and, and, it, and, it's, and it, does, it does some really nice things, both on-premise and, and Thing client through the cloud, um, but really it it is a presentation tool, and it and it, it it's designed really to work in conjunction with a modern data state. In fact, or maybe it's the other way. Maybe a modern data state is really designed to support those type of those type of tools for the end users to consume the data. It's just a conduit for your data. I mean, mm. you have to have your data to feed into yeah. that conduit. And yeah. you know, I would see Power BI. Uh, I, it's a Microsoft product. So that should be clear, you know, that's a distinction versus Tableau. And also, you know, it's, I, I see it as very similar to Power Query. Um, the language is the same. And yep. if you have an understanding of Power Query, you can move really well into, into Power BI. Uh, excellent yeah. tool. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the one thing I think that that's, that, you know, that uh, hopefully is illustrated reasonably well on this is that, you know, when you start thinking about your modern data state, there's lots of things you're going to be wanting to do with your data. <laughs> and Power BI is only one piece of it. Yeah. You know, you need to be able to have an, an environment where you can take that data. And if you want to start exploring, you know, uh, some sort of a cloud-based analytics tool set, you need to have that, that centralized, robust, trustable data set that you can use to feed into that, you know. It helps you visualize so, your data in a nice, confined yeah. space. That's great for, great, great for telling stories. It's fantastic yeah. for, for part, you know, for imparting information visually uh, to, to, to lots, of different, lots of different people in the organization. I really see it as um, on, on a scale of complexity, right? If, if your data complexity is, is low, if it's quite simple, say you have a few Excel spreadsheets or one pretty small ERP system, you could absolutely get away with, with Power BI being your only tool, right? And you just plug right into there. Um, but when we're talking about the modern data estate, you know, we're talking about larger organizations that have a very high degree of data complexity. You know, in this diagram, you're showing multiple different data sources on the left. Your average business uh, is going to have a CRM system, an ERP system, these logs, these, these files, all of these different data sources. And it requires an intermediate layer to be able to integrate that data to create, as you guys mentioned earlier, this, this 
uh, transformed, this governed single version of truth. Because otherwise, if you're just still using uh, Power BI from there, um, you're going to get into a situation where you're going to have different versions of truth. You have, you're looking at different parts of data and presenting uh, uh, different answers to the same question. Yeah, one, one thing that, um, that I think is uh, we haven't really covered, which I think is an important piece to talk about as well is uh, from the benefits of the modern data state is, is, is um, how fundamentally in some aspects it is different to a traditional approach of say, just building a data warehouse. And that's around the automation side of things. I mean, one of the things that's really nice about you know, using true modern data state tools is that it allows, you know, it allows you to build these solutions very quickly. And that really comes down to automation. Um, if, you know, when, we're, when we're building these kind of solutions for our clients, you know, when you think about it, the thing that really delivers value to the end user is that data set that allows them to examine and analyze their business and make decisions on it. They need all the other stuff. They need the documentation. They need the audit controls, the compliance components. Um, but uh, one thing that it um, that it uh, you know that's a real key enabler for the modern data state is automation. I mean, really, what you want to be looking, at, especially in today's day and age, is having a, a, an environment where and a tool set that you're using where you know the the hard work's done. You can focus almost like a I like to think of myself as an artist in some ways. You know, almost like an artist on what what the data you know, the data kind of um, picture needs to be for the end user and have all the other hard work really automated for you. It, it does a massive, a massive kind of, um, you know, uplift in so far as being able to deliver these solutions very quickly at, at very reasonable cost. I what I would like to add to that from a user perspective, because um, at the end of the day, you know, I'm using that data. And uh, to mm. Paul's point, um, you can build prototypes very quickly in this environment. You can mm. visualize what you think people want. You can then share those with the stakeholders, make sure that they're comfortable with that before you lock it down into a governed process. So, so it gives you the best of both worlds. That's what I would say. And the other thing I'd like to touch on is the scalability is key. You don't have to just plonk everything uh, from my perspective at once. You can sort of move into it and then build it uh, over time. You can add extra components. We don't have a lot of time here, but so I want to uh, kind of uh, touch on that. And um, I think uh, Joseph, you would agree that the, the term automation, that is what is the answer to how does a company who views this as expensive and time consuming, how do they uh, keep a return on investment when they create a, a modern data state? Mm. Um, if you touch on that yeah. for just a few minutes, if you could. Yeah, absolutely. Because as you saw from the diagram, this is a very complex environment, right? To, to build and manage a data lake is complex enough. To, right. to build and manage a data warehouse on top of that and data marts on top of that, that just adds to the complexity. So how does a, a modern you know, organization of, of a decent size um, staff the amount of people required to maintain that architecture. It's just, it's untenable really. Um, and so automation is a very key part yeah. of being able to maintain this architecture. And I love to use the analogy of the, the modern operating system, talking about, you know, Windows 10 or, or iOS on, on the iPhone, right? Where back in the day we had MS-DOS, right? Where we actually re required experts to, to use a complex coding language to interact with a computer. It can only do so much for us so fast and only certain people could use it. But now with a modern operating system, just about anyone can log on, check their email, browse the web, um, do some coding, they can, they can, uh, uh, do development, whatever they need to do on multiple different windows, all at the same time. So productivity has gone through the roof, and that's due to the automation of the modern operating system. And that's essentially how I see, you know, Time Extender and these other automation tools as an otter operating system for the modern data data estate, enabling you to increase your productivity, to increase the what you can do, lowering the barrier to entry, allowing. Um, your, your average person, uh, data engineer, to now manage a data lake, right? Which before, this required a completely different uh, skill set, a yeah. uh, completely yeah. different career path yeah. that um, was, was required. Yeah. I mean, the other thing as well, I think, is that, you know, the, the benefits are interesting on all fronts. You know, for, as a solution provider, we can deliver these solutions you know, quicker for our, for our clients, so they can get they can you know they can see benefit. We we 
you know, we're able to really please our clients very quickly for the, for the stakeholder, you know, the time to be able to actually realizing value from your investment, which is less than it would be because of the automation mm -hmm. side of it is, is so drastically reduced. So you're getting the data faster, you're getting the data cheaper, um, you know, and then from a, from a, I guess, from a, from a, from a, technology side of things as well, the automation is, is, is massive for that future proofing. You know, it, it, if you're in a situation where, you know, and we haven't really touched on this too much, you know, one of the things if you should be, you should be able to sit there and, and, and decide what you want to do with your data platform based on your business need, not on your technology limitations. You know, you should be saying today, everything's on premise because that actually makes the most sense for us as an organization. But, you know, two years from now, it's got to be in the cloud because some new capabilities come out there that we want to take advantage of. And you should be able to just step into that space and start leveraging that for your need. Automation is the thing that, that, that helps you to do that piece because the last thing you want to do is start saying, I'm going to rebuild my whole solution now right. using cloud-based technology. Right. Yeah. We, we don't want that. And, and, and the, the solution also should be uh, transitionable into, uh, you just just touched on the cloud. Um, yeah. from what I understand, uh, uh, something like Time Extender, the modern day state through Time Extender, allows that transition simply and easily and, and however you want it, whenever you want it. So it can be on-prem hybrid in the cloud. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. exactly right. Perfect. Okay. So just a, a few more minutes uh, left here, guys. So, um, uh, if you guys have any other points that you want to bring up in the next couple of minutes on the modern data state, uh, we had some more things to talk about, but I think time is going to be a bit of a hindrance here. So, well, I guess for me, um, one of the things that I, I, th I think that um, people should understand is that you know it, it's a different space now if you're considering these kind of solutions. Uh, you know, the, the 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 risk is greatly reduced now with the tools that are available. So, if you've been thinking about these type of solutions in the past as an organization, thinking, oh, those business intelligence or data warehousing projects are two, three years that I have to invest money in. And then at the end, I find out if I get what I wanted, you know, it's, it's not that anymore. You know, yeah, the fear, the fear has been taken out of it. I think uh, over the, especially over the last two years, yeah. uh, as I've seen, um, anyone else have anything to add to it before we, what about Stephen? What about the, what about, what do you see from a stakeholder's perspective insofar as the demand to be more data driven in your business process? Oh, it, it, it always has been, Data driven, the, the challenge is to getting at the data uh, because very often that data exists in source proprietary systems uh, that you need to know how to write a report in that application to get anything sensible. And then you got to figure out how to join that data with information from other applications. Uh, this is a tremendous enabler. It's, it's very scalable. And I find that a solution that you may build for one stakeholder, you can actually apply to another. Absolutely. Um, very minimal modification. I find that's the experience I've had from HSBC and BNTB is that once you've developed the central core reports, especially if you're in a bank, a bank is a bank, you need banking information, um, you're going to get a variety of different stakeholders wanting to tap into that data. And you can very easily do that because of the relational capabilities and the fact that that data is sitting in your data lake so that you mm. can tap into it. I mean, it's tremendous. I mean, there's, there's, there's a stack load of things that we can do <laughs> yeah. with all of the stuff that we have. Uh, it's just a matter of dealing with the stakeholders to be clear exactly what they want and how they want it. Any last thoughts before we... Joseph. Yeah, I just, I, I, I have a big smile on my face, you know, listening to this. I, I love to hear, you know, stakeholders using technology to, to you know, and uh, in, in using automation to just make business decisions easier, right? Mm -hmm. To make make mm -hmm. their jobs and their lives easier, um, and uh, when that when that is implemented and, and done successfully, that uh, is just very exciting for me to see. So, yeah, thanks. Yeah. And I think that's the key here, and what we were trying to to portray here, and what we we're trying to share with anyone who's who's viewing. Um, you know, we go on forever. I know there's a lot to talk about, and there's still more to talk about. And I hope that we've uh, given some insight. And if anyone has any interest in learning more, please contact Bespoke Analytics. You can go to our portal page um, on the uh, Bermuda Development Agency's uh, Tech Summit. Um, we'll be happy to talk more about it and uh, maybe Absolutely. give you a solution. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. Okay. Yeah.